Oh well, hello January. We all know what's happening. It's once again the time of the year to like take stock and start fresh and get our little act together. So I've been thinking about this a lot, like what health difficulties that I often run into like all the time and what I do to deal with them. Basically, I've made a list of four unhealthy habits that I have and four weird and highly specific healthy habits I've come up with like over the years to counteract the bad ones. So four of my unhealthy habits in no particular order are being too lazy to work out and drinking alcohol and being a stressed out little overthinker and also being quite a little comfort eater. So my solutions to this? Well, let's dig into all this, shall we? I'm sure there are many other comfort eaters out there watching this. Like when I'm stressed or tired or pms -y, I love eating so much. Like eating is one of my best skills, actually. I'm a huge eater, but I do tend to eat very healthy food, like, you know, unprocessed vegan nice things. But I've told you that 2023 was a monster of a year. Nothing was normal or calm or reasonable at all. And yes, I did allow myself to have quite a relaxed attitude to, you know, eating more of the like not so healthy, more processed vegan foods. I mean, it wasn't so bad. I got a bit of a um, popcorn obsession, like it's not going to kill me, you know, but a lot more of the like in between meals comfort snacking and a lot more like pre-dinner popcorn eating and wine drinking which is always a sign of me being a little bit stressed out. Honestly, during the renovations, those like intense 10 weeks, we had like wine and popcorn in front of the Airbnb fireplace, like four nights a week, I'd say. Anyway, whenever I lose track a bit of my healthy diet and feel like I start stress craving bad food, you know that feeling? I've noticed something over the years, and that is that the sort of snack makes a huge difference on me mentally. So if I eat something like crisps or like white bread or popcorn for that matter, like without much nutritional density, I can sort of just like mindlessly keep on going without feeling like I've had enough. Honestly, like the amount of bread I can eat if I put my mind to it, it could probably like win competitions. On the other hand, if I eat something like fruits or berries or raw vegetables, like basically if I eat crudités instead of crisps, it's like I get the same mental satisfaction from treating myself to something tasty, but I don't get the same like mindless, endless bowl to mouth hand motion because when I eat something so nutrient dense as blueberries or carrots or seaweed snacks, like not only am I giving myself an emotional treat, but my body gets sort of calm and satisfied by the nutrients and goes like, you know what? Thank you, Jenny. That was enough, which I never get from popcorn. Do you recognize this feeling of, you know, eating something packed with nutrients and feeling like, whoa, that was quite potent and like your body is like pleased. So comfort eating, yes, I'm all for it. It's a wonderful way to give ourselves a break from the hardships and, you know, bad times. But comfort eating in a way that makes me also feel satisfied instead of just sort of empty and full of salt. Yes, please. That's my favorite way to do it. Because honestly, I'm a simple girl, like I'm not hard to please at all. I'm seriously just as happy to like be snacking on carrot sticks and edamame beans and cucumbers dipped in salt as I am with like three cooked crisps or the most expensive chocolate pralines. So my weird healthy habit is this, comfort eating as a good thing, as a mental health thing, but comfort eating on things that my body gets excited about digesting and like picking out nutrients from. How about it? Not a bad compromise, is it? Listen, I've said this before, I hate the gym. I honestly can't stand it. It's such a chore and I rely solely on self-discipline to make myself go there at all. And you know, I always feel like a routine is not at all sustainable or realistic if you have to rely on self-discipline and determination. Because if there's a slight mishap in life, that determination to like pack the gym bag will be like so gone, at least for me. I mean, sometimes we have to force ourselves to go do something, but we at least know that when we get there, we will feel good. And I know a lot of people feel like that about the gym, that, you know, once you do get changed and like get on the treadmill or pick up the free weights, you will go like, ah, I'm happy I went. I don't feel that way. Like I've never enjoyed a treadmill. So I told you this the other week in my big 2024 reset video that in like May last year, maybe I gave up my gym membership I just didn't want to force myself to do something several hours every week that I hated doing. That's not nice on the soul. So 
now I go on walks and I work out from home. If you want to know more about like my workout routine, I do talk about it in the recent video. So go take a look if you feel like it. I'll put a link, you know, somewhere. But okay, so I don't particularly enjoy working out from home either. I have to rely on self-discipline a lot there too. But I have a weird way of dealing with that though. And that's to like make my half hour workout session as enjoyable as humanly possible. And one way to do that is to make like the actual workout a nice experience, which I again talk more about in the recent video. But I have another super cheeky little trick. It's like a strange one, so please don't judge me for it because I am sharing this with you now in case there are any other like gym aversive people out there. So the way to get me to enjoy working out is doing it in front of a mirror in attractive workout wear. And this is key, putting my hair up in a cute bun and wearing lipstick. I don't know what it is, but looking pretty while working out, trying to find like the exercises that look graceful and like ballet-esque. I'm 100% more likely to work out if I manage this. Also, I push the volume down on my workout program quite low and I play beautiful classical music like Chopin and Vivaldi and Cupra and like channel my inner ballerina for 30 minutes. So the workout session not only makes me stronger and stretches me out and helps me deal with, you know, sitting way too many hours in front of a screen every day, it also makes me feel calm and beautiful and serene. It's like a 30 minute body appreciation session three times a week. So working out, I trick myself to do it simply by elevating the luxury factor of the session with lit candles and classical music and yes, a touch of bright red lipstick. Which very fittingly brings me to this week's sponsor. Let me say a huge thank you to Fanka for sponsoring this video. Fanka is an activewear brand that is always on the lookout for the best possible fabric performance. Because I mean, hello, our workout gear should of course be comfortable and convenient to wear, but also at the same time, as we have just concluded, make us feel like the gorgeous, gorgeous girlies that we are. Funka's clothes are also highly breathable and ensure that you stay all cool and fresh and nice during your workout. I received five items from them. The first one being these body sculpt leggings in a tan color. And I don't think I've ever come across this in activewear before, but they are actually reversible. So I can wear them two different ways. I mean, how clever, very clever indeed. Additionally, the leggings have muscle protection and knee support to help you in your workout and they also come in 30 stunning colors for you to choose from. And part of the material is also 3D printed for like maximum durability. With that, I also get the body sculpt bra tank in a moon mist color and these just look so great together. Additionally, I received the Beyond Nude drawstring long sleeve top and this is so comfortable. It feels like I'm wearing nothing at all. And you can wear it either full length, of course, or use a drawstring to get like the rouged up effect. And what do you think of the Beyond Nude everyday leggings in sunset color? Aren't these just the perfect for like at home elegant ballerina-esque type of workouts? So pretty. They're super soft and they have like a seamless front, ridiculously comfortable and so, so flexible, which is sorely needed when I'm, you know, knee deep into my grand plies, you know? Now over to maybe my favorite look of the bunch. This makes me feel like so Matrix era. The body contour set in black. How swanky is it? I'm going to use this set on like my long Sunday walks in the park with David because if there's one thing I love when going on long walks is to dress up my workout gear. I'm thinking like my Balenciaga ski sunnies and like a hot pink lipstick and maybe like a high braid with this. What do you think? And also as a Coley girl, my favorite feature on workout wear, the full cuff that covers my whole hand when it's cold outside. I love this because cold wrists is just not it. So hey, if you want to get your own Funka leggings or workout wear, just click the link below in the description and guys, use my promo code Jenny for 15% off site-wide. And you can have a look at their full collection to get something that you really like. I truly recommend the futuristic black set, but they have other brilliant items to choose from too, so go take a look, why don't ya? Also, they have a 30-day return and exchange policy. Okay, that's it. Thank you, Funka, and let's get back to the video. Next unhealthy habit we need to discuss, and I don't think that there is a single person watching this right now who is not at least sometimes struggling with it, stressing out. 
Basically, me personally, I pack too much in. I know I do it. I even know I do it when I'm doing it, when I'm like filling in something new into my calendar. I think like, oh man, this is probably not a good idea. And even when I have a calmer period calendar-wise, I do things that make me feel stressed out for no good reason. Like spending too much time on social media, even if it starts out at being like inspirational and beautiful or funny or cute cats, you know, I always feel like there's a tipping point where if I stay on too long, it will just like start agitating my nerves. Do you also feel that way? Do we like actively choose to do things that raise our pulse and stress hormones and make our heads feel frazzled on our time off or even while we're working on other things like picking at the mobile when we're at work or studying? So my next weird healthy habit is a classic going airplane mode for like hours every day. I really started noticing the negative effect of my phone when I first created like my writing routine a few years back, when I wrote like the first draft of OK Days, because writing a novel or like fiction in general, for me, it takes an extreme amount of focus to get into the mode. So I started writing from like seven in the morning until lunch or like noon. And during those hours, I airplane moded my phone. Not once did I look at it while working. I also had like no email or social tabs on my computer. So David is always telling me that I'm like a completely different person when I write. I'm like calmer, happier, and just like more pleased with life and with myself. And just, I just seem right. Like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And yes, he's like absolutely correct. When I'm in a writing period, I do feel just right. And of course that's because like, I'm meant to write, like my brain loves this particular activity more than any other pastime, is what like my brain is meant to be doing. But also what I have been thinking more and more is like how big part of my calm and happiness and just feeling pleased with the world that I feel when I'm writing, how big part of it is, you know, my phone being in airplane mode. So I've started airplaning left and right now, like if I'm replying to emails, Airplane, if I'm watching TV, I'm gonna airplane. Reading with a wolf, oh, you know it needs to be an airplane for that. It would be sacrilege to pick at my phone in the middle of Mrs. Dalloway. She deserves our full attention, Big Sister Wolf. Oh guys, you know I love my champagne and my cremant, and I'd even enjoy a Prosecco in a pinch. I want every day to be a celebration of something, anything, I don't really mind what. I just love celebrating my life and David's life and like other people's successes. The thing with champagne though, as fun and delightful as it is in the moment, as headachey and drowsy it is the day after. And what I really don't like is to be hungover, you know, in that sense where it kind of ruins the day after the celebratory fun. Now, although I love any wine that sparkles, I rarely drink enough to make me that kind of like super hangover, like, you know, let's stay in pajamas, watching comedies, eating fried food type of hangover. That's like um, once per year kind of thing for me, maybe after like a very big celebration. So I'm not talking about being like truly hangover. I'm talking about just like feeling a tad affected by the night before, you know what I mean? Like. Um, bit of a headache and a bit of like being a bit sluggish. So, okay, you are going to think that David and I are so frolicsome right now, but one thing that we love to do if we wake up sluggish on a Sunday morning is to make a humongous, intensely potent beetroot smoothie and go on like a two or three hour walk. Why beetroot, you ask? Well, I've heard two lovely things about beetroot. Firstly, if you look at bioavailability, which means the amount of nutrients the human body can process and make use of, beetroot is the healthiest thing you can eat, even more so than kale or so I've heard. So basically, it packs a punch. But secondly, and more interesting in this context, is that I've heard that beetroot is a liver cleanser. Like, have you heard this too? So good for a post-champagne breakfast, I reckon. Honestly, like this is just what I've heard. I'm not sure like how big of a difference it actually makes to your overall health, but hey, I'm a big promoter of placebo. Like if I think I'm treating my body kindly, it will make me happier and calmer and therefore healthier. Et voila. I also like to add an obscene amount of ginger in my smoothie. So it's spicy and fresh and wakes me right up. 
But listen, David and I are not smoothie drinkers normally. We're not that type of like acai berry yoga vegans. I mean, I wish we were. We just don't have the time to, you know, carefully calibrate a health routine that way. So our Sunday smoothie long walks in the park, it feels like the biggest luxury and biggest act of self-care imaginable. We can go on like a two or three hour walk that is just like through parks. So we see like a lot of trees and green things and many, many dogs, which also seems so healthy, like after a champagne night, especially living in London, which can like honestly be quite intense at times. So this is what any like city dweller needs on like a weekly basis, I feel like. Walking on like actual grass, smutting on a smoothie, looking at dogs and ducks and like nodding a polite good morning to strangers, like holding someone's hand and just filling your lungs to their full capacity. That type of walk. Ugh, delicious. I wish it was Sunday today, like walking with David. It's my like my best moments in life. But do tell me, what are your most unhealthy habits at the moment? And do you have any like healthy tricks to counteract them? Do you also do any of mine? Listen guys, if you haven't tried airplaning your phone, like when doing anything that takes any kind of focus, like reading or cooking or watching a film or working or whatever, just trust me on this one. It is a true life changer. I'm not even exaggerating. Whatever things that you're dealing with this year though, I really, really hope that it will be better than the last one. That was a monster, wasn't it? I'm looking forward to reading about your healthy habit tricks and like schemes in the comments. And please do give me a like and subscribe if you found this helpful and want me to make more like habits and routine videos. I do love talking about these things because like it realigns me myself to just like sit down and talk about it with you. So thank you for today for hanging out and see you next week. Yes, take care of yourself till then. Peace, peace.